which has happened to Peters and May. Meanwhile, it's also tight behind them. Rough cut racing with Taifu very tight in the turn. And we're looking at the first three. It's race one winners Edox who lead with round one winners Potemps in second, but only just ahead of Peters and May who've made a great start again. And here go the P150 crews around turn one, almost nose to tail. Meanwhile, it's Edox looking to repeat what they did in race one. And that is break away from the pack. We ride with John Wilson and Neil Scarborough as they try and chase down Ripper Pugh and Anthony Crossley. Well, Martin Lyon and Martin Hunter have caught up with Simon Bells and Philippa Baker, so maybe they are getting accustomed to this craft now. Meanwhile, game over for Rough Cut Racing. We're looking at Eclipse, who are pushing hard along with Team Fox in the battle for second, with McDonald Mermaid just behind in fourth in the P150s. Well, what a day it's turning out to be for this crew. A quick look around to make sure no charge from either side. For Temps, third in the Panther class. Here they go, making their way past P150 leaders, Team Purple. Here they go then, Edox Racing are going to take a double win at Plymouth. There's the chequered flag. What a day for Rupert Pugh and Anthony Crossley. And the Union Jack greets the Team Purple and signals the end of the P150 race, their third win in four races. Double delight then for Edox, who take the victory ahead of Peter Zemay, Pateps third, Team 88 fourth, and Helvetia Wealth in fifth. Rupert, I think it's been your weekend, a double win. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Very exciting race again much more different conditions, very difficult out there, very difficult. But again, the first corner was very exciting. So this is how the championship stands going into the next round at Hull. Peters are main third behind Team 88, but the temps on top. Now let's turn our attention to P150. McDonald Mermaid fourth this time behind Team Fox, Eclipse in second, but it's another victory for Team Purple. And that's how the championship stands now. Team Fox in third, behind Eclipse, and Team Purple still leading the way. Well, our winners of the P150, Stuart and Sarah, congratulations. How was that race? Oh, it was great. It was, uh, it was a good start, got to a good start, and just uh, led from the front again, really. So it was really good, enjoyed it. in the north of England for the P1 Superstock Grand Prix of the Sea. Hull is close to the Humber Bridge. It took 10 years to build and at the time of completion it was the longest single span suspension bridge in the world. Today it's ranked at number 5 on the list. This is the course they'll all tackle. Very fast with long straights and a couple of tight turns. Plus, they'll be going straight past the fans, hugging the riverside. There's the flagman. All the navigators trained on him while all the drivers are fixed on the water straight ahead. Come up, come up. Left a little bit. To go, to go, to go. Hold it there. Hold it there. A bit more, a bit more. Go, 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 go. That's good, that's good, that's good. So we're on our way, and already Potemps and Peters and May find themselves out front. This is Aztec Racing we're riding with, Azam Ali and Sam Whittle getting tossed about in the wake that's being created in front of them. And there are definitely three boats making a break for it. One of them, Rough Cut Racing, number 21, Ian Brusby, the local boy who grew up in these parts, and judging from this shot, he's holding second place. And that is indeed the case. Potemps with their noses in front, though. Rough cut, do have the inside line into the next boy with both Peters and May and Edox going wide, but it's game on as far as this race is concerned. Clear to turn whenever you're ready. <laughs> Sorry, whoa! <laughs> Come on, fight it. Clear to turn, let's go. I'm handbrake it round, that's it. Oh, <laughs> I'll do. The temps continue to come under pressure. Just out of shot is Daniel Cramphorn and Kip Collins and Peter Zemay. They're not letting go of John Wilson and Neil Scarborough, who won fairly comfortable at the season opener in Jersey. 
but they are well and truly being pushed around the Humber on this occasion. Still no change in the race order in the P150 class with Team Purple again dictating terms out front. Well, here come Rough Cut Racing, and where have they come from? They've certainly found a rhythm they're more comfortable with and look like the fastest boat out there at present. That's Helvetia Wealth going nowhere. And here is the new race leader, Dan Cramford and Kim Collins. Their first outing in this campaign, and they're making it a very memorable one. Eclipse still going strong. That's Rose Larez and John Donnelly on what is fairly flat water. I'd go as far to say this is possibly the calmest service we've had so far this season. It's looking increasingly unlikely that Rupert Pugh and Anthony Crossley will add to their tally of wins. Despite looking strong, they're some way off the leaders. And out front, Peter Zemay continue to pull away toward the chequered flag. There they go. Five races, three different winners this season. Peter Zemay then jubilant in hole. Team Purple will make it win number four, but they've been pushed all the way by Eclipse, who've closed right in but have been unable to force their way past. It's Stuart and Sarah Curitan who'll pass the Union Jack, which signals the end of the race for the P150 crews. Confirmation of the result. One of the closest finishes of the season with McDonald Mermaid in third behind Eclipse and eventual race winners, Team Purple. In the Panther class, it was so close between the top four for so long, but eventually it was Peters and May who broke free, much to the delight of Kim Collins and Dan Cramphorn. Time for the second and final race of the weekend. Black Magic will start in pole position in the P150 class as reward for coming out on top in the match races. The crews are all holding their lines, waiting for the signal to go. And this is it, the P1 Superstock Grand Prix of the Sea roars into life once again as they charge across the Humber. Sam Whittle navigating for Aztec Racing, Azam Ali not even daring to blink as he focuses dead ahead. The Panthers breaking away the front, and Potemps, number 50, look to have made a good start on the inside, but they're bunching together somewhat. This is Hiversha Wealth, Potemps just to their left. And they appear to have been struck by the Edox boat, who came charging through but with nowhere to go. And Havesha Wealth dropped back as we ride with Potemps. It's another strong start for Wilson and Scarborough. And so too Simon Bells and Philippa Baker in Team 88. They're alongside Edox as they go around the turn. Edox getting out of shape. But Potemps still leading. Edox have moved clear of Team 88 for second place, and their new target is the current race leaders. Whoa, it's turning into some race in the P150s as the boats grab some air. And that's it from Helvetia Wealth. Dan Smith dejectedly holding their flag aloft. Peters and May looking to push up the inside of Team 88. Dan Cramphorn and Kim Collins appear to be past Simon Bells and Philippa Baker, but sometimes appearances can be deceptive, although it looks like they've got the measure of their rivals. Now then, this is Team Fox and Team Purple side by side in P150, and it doesn't get much closer than that. The Curitans in 13 of the inside line, and perhaps just a smidge braver than Martin Colligan and Liam McDermott, who may have just backed off slightly. They've certainly lost the impetus and now look to move on to the inside, and they'll try and attack again. While John Wilson and Neil Scarborough know from experience it doesn't get much better. It's one of the toughest sports on the planet, so winning a P1 Superstock is a joy rarely experienced elsewhere. Delight for them. Team Purple will make it win number five, but without doubt, their toughest of the campaign. This is how they finish then, with McDonald Mermaid taking third ahead of Flying Sparks. Second goes to Team Fox, with Team Purple once again on top spot of the podium.
The championship looks like this. Team Purple in a very comfortable looking number one position, 22 points ahead of nearest rivals Eclipse. Let's see then how the P1 Panthers fared. A strong second place for Rough Cut Racing with Edox recovering strongly to end the day in third, but it's win number three for the season for Potemps and a delighted Neil Scarborough and John Wilson. In the overall scheme of things, it's Team 88 and Edox who are tied on 85 points, but it's the consistent scoring of Potemps which has them at the top of the table. Fantastic weekend racing, some of the closest we've seen yet here in Hull. We're on the beautiful Isle of Wight for the Cows Pool Cows Grand Prix of the Sea. This is the Monaco of powerboat racing, and we're expecting a great race. Now let's have a look at the course the crews are racing today, and it needs a careful study because it's rather different to the usual two-mile layout they've raced on so far this year. It's ten times longer, and it really is preparation intense. There's no substitute for chart time. They'll all have done their navigational homework and prepared the boats for these really tough conditions. We've raced in a couple of bays, we've raced on a couple of rivers, and now we're probably out at sea. You're in probably some of the busiest waters in the world. Getting the navigation right is key because if you go the wrong way, you, know, you, can, you can lose 10 miles. It can be a very confused sea out in the Solent, and then Pool Bay is notorious for big rollers. This race will be unlike anything else this year, and as we've heard, keeping everything together is the first priority, and that may not be so easy. Coming up to the start, though, positions taken at random, but it's a perfect formation. Both classes together now, but just watch the P1 Panthers make the break when it goes. Green, this one will be all about power, using it well and getting the navigation right. That's a good heading. And they're heading out on this eight mile run through the roughest waters on the course. The needle's off to port and the first turn at two boys somewhere dead ahead. And already the Panthers surging ahead. This is Martin Culligan and Liam McDermott in Team Fox. A good finish might help them up the championship ladder, but there's a long way to go before they can think like that. John Wilson and Neil Scarborough lead in per attempt. Edox second, Helvetia well third. And this looks like problems for Andy Wilby and Johnny Elba in Typhoon. It looks fairly terminal. Trimmed absolutely flat with the pilots doing a great job of balancing the boats for the conditions. Championship leader per attempt pulling away from Edox as it slows and stops in the water. Well, here's the penalty for being more aggressive with the throttle. Rupert Pugh and Anthony Crossley flying Edox, a real hard impact, so nearly so much worse. Pertem streaking past as they slow to assess the damage. And back on it again, and that was a lucky escape. Look how far out of the water it got, so nearly backflipped. Rupert Pugh really pushing it to the limit, and if you want to know how strong these boats are, there's your answer. Look how hard this is, even when nothing goes wrong. Heading OK? Perfect. Big one. What the hell? That's the highest we've been. Yep. And again. Right that dot again, John. Here's Shelley, Jory Lee and Dan Smith. Endurance racing, tough for women anyway, but Shelley's still not fully fit after a huge accident in Sardinia last year. Good. Keep going, keep going. Retired. Keep going. Dan Smith telling her not to linger after slowing to make sure the crew are OK, but you can see they're waving to let her know. 
We're a good 10 miles offshore as the course turns towards Old Harry, and you can contrast that with the normal races when they're just a few hundred metres off the beach to see how different and unique this weekend really is. 08 is Team Fox. This is Eclipse, and there's a battle royal here for the lead of P150. But there's no battle at the front of the Panther 250 class because Pertemps has stopped in the water. Another victim of the tremendous battering this race dishes out. Everything's double bolted and triple tie wrapped, but to no avail. The Peters and Maybo almost like a different part of the country. The water's so different. And from up here, it looks as though Helvetia Wealth has got the edge on Team 88 despite the wider line, and so it is. Second place for Shelley Jury, Lee, and Dan Smith. The P150s are on the home run as well, and they'll have been told that the race distance has been shortened. This is going one lap and not two, so this is the battle for the win, not the flag, and it's happening in both classes, P150 and P1 Panther 250. It's Darren Hook and David Harwood who lead the big boats home then. And we just caught a glimpse of Shelley Jury Lee and Dan Smith, not too far behind them. Team Purple are running third in P150. But here's the Peters and Mayboat still strong in the lead, heading home for a win that will spoil Pertemp's unbroken string of victories, but won't affect their championship. And here's Pertemp, well down after mending a throttle cable in these seas, but fourth place could be vital to the championship. Team 88, Simon Bales and Philippa Baker, they will get third, and this is the calmest part of the race. But the organisers have made a, a brave and a wise decision to cut it short and reduce it by 50%. And these two think this is the battle for victory, but they're